Solution stoichiometry is where one or more of the reactants is listed with a given volume and molarity for your reaction. From there, you can calculate the limiting and excess reactant if necessary and the amount of any product from the reaction. In my reaction, I will be reacting sodium bicarbonate, which is in baking soda, with acetic acid that's in vinegar. I'll be calculating the theoretical carbon dioxide mass as well as running an experiment at the end that I calculate or show the experimental mass of carbon dioxide from this reaction. That way we can calculate a percent error of that experiment and see if it's valid. Right away I'm going to show you this reaction so you can detect which reactant might be limiting in excess and see the production of the gas that's produced. So here's the experiment. 8.05 grams was measured out of the sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. Then water was placed in the Erlmeyer flask distilled water to dissolve the sodium bicarbonate. I added universal indicator to show that water starts out green, which is neutral. And then when you add the sodium bicarbonate, it's turning to a bluish color, signifying that sodium bicarbonate is a base. The next step of the experiment was to measure 40 0.0 milliliters of the acetic acid solution, which was 0.839 molar. I wanted to make sure I had exactly 40.0, so I need my meniscus right on that 40 line on the graduated cylinder. The 40 milliliters of the vinegar or acetic acid solution was placed in an Erlmeyer flask, and then I rinsed the graduated cylinder to make sure that all the solution that I measured of the vinegar went into the flask. I added universal indicator which turned red, showing again that vinegar is definitely an acid. The two reactants, sodium bicarbonate and acetic acid, are placed in a larger Erlenmeyer flask for the reaction to take place. I'm rinsing down the inside of the smaller flask so that I remove all of the measured sodium bicarbonate and acetic acid to take place in this reaction. There will be a limiting reactant and an excess reactant in this reaction that we'll have to calculate using stoichiometry. I will write the balanced equation which will prove that the gas that's being produced is carbon dioxide. Take note of the color of the universal indicator when this reaction is over. It'll give you an indication of which reactant was limiting and which one was excess. Now that we've seen the reaction, it's time to move on to the theoretical mass of carbon dioxide that can be created in this reaction. The first thing you need to do is you need to write the balanced equation for this reaction. So our reaction is between sodium bicarbonate which is baking soda, solid, and acetic acid. I'm gonna write acetic acid this way so that we can see that this is gonna be a double replacement reaction. So the sodium is going to attempt to bond with the acetate and the hydrogen ion here will bond with the bicarbonate ion and actually decompose in this reaction. So this reaction creates a sodium acetate solution. So you have to look up that that would be a soluble salt. So they're actually not bonded, they're dissociated and dissolved. You also make H2CO3, but that's a compound that decomposes into H2O and CO2, which we can tell from seeing the reaction. So the next thing after you have the balanced equation is, is to move on to the given. This is all balanced, it's all one to one, so there's all one moles out in front here uh, between every reactant and every product. So the next step is gonna be writing down the given. So we had 8.05 grams that you saw reacting with approximately 40.0 milliliters of this acetic acid. And this is nothing more than vinegar. And this is the fairly accepted molarity for vinegar. And then we're trying to find the mass of the CO2. Later in the experiment, I ran it again and we'll find a per, like an experimental mass of the CO2 and create a percent error at the very end of this video. So what you're gonna do first is you don't know who's limiting in excess technically with the numbers. You maybe can tell from the video though. So the first thing you have to do is you have to calculate the moles of each of your reactants and compare those mole amounts to see which one of these was limiting and which one was excess. The reason I wanted you to see the demonstration was I think you have an idea already. If not, let's do the math. The molar mass of sodium bicarbonate is 84.01 grams of sodium bicarbonate for every one mole. Oops, make that an NaHCO3. 
So there's our first uh, mole amount we have to calculate. So take your calculator and type in 8.05 and then divide that by 84.01. And we get a mole amount of 0 0.0958. And then I'm gonna carry some extra sig figs. I'll carry at least one. I have three here and four here. So let's carry this out to four moles of sodium bicarbonate. Okay, so that's our first step. Next is to take this molarity and volume and find the moles of the acetic acid that was used. So start with your volume of your acetic acid solution. Okay, so that means it's some mostly water in this case. Vinegar is about 5% acetic acid and about 95% water. So it has a molarity then of having for every 100 milliliters, that's the something I like to do instead of putting a liter, it's 0.839 moles of that acetic acid you know, molecule, okay? So then the next thing is gonna be calculating the moles of that. So take 40 divided by 1,000, then times 0.839, and we have a mole amount of 0 0.0335, and then I'll carry the six, 3356. Now, because this is a one-to-one -one mole ratio, it's easy to kind of detect which one of these is limiting and which one's excess. You would need one mole of the sodium bicarbonate for every one mole of the acetic acid. So because we have 0 0.09 moles of this one and we only have 0 0.03, we can kind of tell right away that this is our limiting. And I think you could tell that from even the experiment that you saw. And then this is our excess. So we had extra baking soda left, left over. Remember that was a base and this was an acid. I think you could kind of tell that from the reaction when it was complete. So now what you need to do is take your limiting, that's gonna control the amount of carbon dioxide that can be produced. So start with your limiting mole amount, which is the moles of the acetic acid. And then run a mole ratio, so I will show you this one. And they're all one to one. So for every one mole of acetic acid, we would produce one mole of carbon dioxide gas. So again, we get the same number. So I'm just gonna keep going and do another calculation. And we wanna have the mass this time. You could actually make this problem into another problem, which is calculating the volume of CO2 if you knew the temperature and the atmospheric pressure of the day. But let's keep going and just finding mass. So for every one mole of CO2, its molar mass is 44.01 grams of CO2. So take that mole amount, it's times one divided by one, and then just multiply that by 44.01 and we get a mass of 1.47, like six, nine. So we can only keep three sig figs. So our theoretical mass that we should get would be around 1.48 grams of CO2. So again, if you, you know, remember from your basic stoichiometry, this is called the theoretical mass. And what we're gonna do in the second part of this demo and experiment and problem, this solution stoic problem is I'm gonna calculate an experimental by doing the, the whole experiment again a little differently to give us a fairly predicted mass of the CO2 and then we'll run a percent error calculation. I repeated the experiment, but this time I placed all of my equipment and the reactants on the balance all at one time and then after I added my baking soda to the vinegar, you can watch the mass decrease, which is the approximate mass of carbon dioxide that's being released into the air in this experiment. I let the reaction take place for a few more minutes, and then the approximate mass of carbon dioxide that we'll say is the experimental mass is 1.32 grams of carbon dioxide that was produced. When I ran the experiment a second time by putting all the materials on the balance and not dissolving anything and just using the masses that were present, you notice that the mass decreased by about 1.32 grams. And that would be approximately the mass of CO2 that left the, you know, the reaction went into the air and did not stay in the solution with some errors. So let's just see how much error is in this experiment. And then you can think about why didn't I get exactly the right theoretical mass of 1.48. So let's just check and see how this experiment turned out. So you take 1.48, which is the theoretical, you subtract it from the experimental, and sometimes you have to take the absolute value. In this case, I got, I, you know, I only had 
you know, less than the uh, theoretical, in this case 1.32, and then you divide it by the theoretical. So that's the formula, theoretical minus the, ex, you know, the lab, divided by the theoretical. Sometimes these are called accepted and this is called experimental. So make sure you have your formula for percent error, common formula to use in chemistry. And then let's just check and see how this experiment worked, if it was a valid way to prove and what kind of error it had. And then divide it by the 1.48, and again, I get times 100, oops. I get about a 10.8% error in that experiment, which is bad. Um, if I were to run it again, I could check to see if it was valid. The other thing is what made me not get the, you know, the approximate mass closer to the theoretical. So that's something you can think about with sources of error and justify why that would happen.